and good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to this exciting breakout session. Hello, I'm Geeta Lal, and I'm a senior technical advisor on maternal health and midwifery at UNFPA, the United Nations Population Fund. I'm also UNFPA's global midwifery program coordinator, and I'm so delighted to be moderating this session. Since yesterday, we have been listening Sorry, did we lose Gita? Everybody, if you could just give us a moment to get our moderator Gita back. One moment, please. Thank you for your patience while we try to get Gita back online. We know that we have these challenges in virtual settings sometimes. Thank you for your patience. Maybe while we're waiting for Gita to come back to us, to, oh, there she is. My sincere apologies. I had a, a bit of a technical glitch. I'm just going to continue. Um, I'm just so delighted to be here. I'm Gita Lal. I'm the moderator of the session, and uh, uh, I'm the senior midwifery program coordinator from UNFPA. Uh, since yesterday, we've been listening to inspiring discussions on the incidents, current evidence gaps, and some strategies on addressing common perinatal mental disorders, and some sal salient points that emerged throughout the thought-provoking discussions yesterday. Uh, you know, bordered on the acute shortage of well-trained healthcare providers on, on CPMDs and the need to also take into account additional societal, cultural, economic factors, stigma, GBV, among many others that impact on CPMD. And uh, when developing uh, programs and uh, making them effective, it is really important to take an integrated, contextualized, and an ins institutionalized approach. In this session, we will look at some successful and promising implementation strategies that ensure the presence of trained providers of MNH care at RM RMNCAH facilities. These strategies recognize that if training of service providers isn't part of an overall integrated planning process, it doesn't work. Provider training cannot just be an add-on, it must be properly planned, implemented, and institutionalized. For this session, we have with us four brilliant panelists who I will introduce as I call, call them out. The structure would be that we will have a state setting pres uh, presentation by WHO on the evidence surrounding building of provider capacities around maternal mental health and the kind of tools available for this. This will be followed by a panel uh, who will share their successful implementation strategies in Nigeria, Bangladesh, and, and Liberia. And at the, at the end, we will have about 10 minutes for q and &A. I sincerely encourage you to post your questions as we go along in the chat. And I also want to mention, if you are unable to take all the questions, 
from, uh, from 11 to 11.30 a.m. today, uh, EDT, ESD, uh, you, you can have further discussions with our panelists in the social networking event that the organizers are having. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our very first speaker from WHO, Dr. Tarun Dua. Dr. Tarun Dua is the head of the Brain Health Unit, the Department of Mental Health and Substance Use at the World Health Organization. Over to you, Dr. Dua. Right, can you see my screen, Geeta? Yes, yes, please go ahead. <clears throat> right, so, so thanks uh, for uh, having me here for this panel, uh, panel discussion around the strengthening provider capacity to support quality mental and mental health care at facility level. Why the provider capacity is important? One of the reasons is the shortage of mental health care providers. And this is especially true in low and middle income countries. So if you look at this figure that is on the right hand side, if there are, for example, the number of mental health workforce uh, globally is nine per hundred thousand, it is less than one in African countries. And it is around 2.5 per hundred thousand in Southeast Asian region countries. So this means that we will not have mental health, sufficient mental health workforce in the next few years to meet all the needs and the demands uh, that are required uh, for uh, maternal mental health care. So what is the alternative? What is the solution? It is task sharing, building capacity and expanding the health providers who can provide appropriate quality mental health care, such as nurses, midwives, general practitioners, family doctors, social workers, community health workers, and many others. So one question that is also asked to uh, the mental health uh, specialists is, what is the evidence about it that these workers can provide such care? Isn't it a, uh, the role of the specialist? Sufficient evidence has been generated from the field. And some of this evidence is actually from low and middle income countries that MNCH healthcare providers can be trained to screen for these problems and provide appropriate social, psychosocial care. So for example, there is evidence about training community health workers. And there are many entry points for providing such services, such as immunization visits, antenatal or postnatal care visits, under five visits, and and thus providing opportunities for integration of mental health into these services. Not only uh, the, it's the healthcare providers, psychosocial interventions can also be delivered by peers. And there are, again, we have sufficient evidence to show that this is possible. In regarding the tools that can be used, there are many tools that are available and I'm focusing on a couple from uh, the World Health Organization. Uh, so you, many of you have used, or you might be aware of the Mental Health Gap Action Program. And we have tools in forms of job aids which provide simple algorithms, training manuals, including an uh, app. So if, for example, if you Google EMH Gap, you can find the app and download it on your phone. And we are also working on the course through the WHO Academy. So in order to scale up uh, the uh, MH gap through e-learning processes. Similarly, Thinking Healthy developed in Pakistan, adapted by WHO, a manual for psychosocial management of perinatal depression has been used across many countries. In addition, I wanted to uh, flag a competency-based uh, platform known as Equip, uh, which is about uh, how the uh, healthcare providers can be trained to provide quality care and psychological support, as, and this includes competencies for training and supervision. A question that is very relevant, especially in the times of COVID-19 is, can we leverage technology to train and supervise providers for maternal mental health care? And the answer, the short answer to that is yes. There, are, uh, there is evidence available. So for example, technology-assisted cascaded training and supervision system for training has been 
uh, used and have was found as effective as face-to-face uh, -face training. There are also many examples from many parts of the world, such as India, Pakistan, Zimbabwe, Peru, China, and Nigeria, where digital tools have, are being used and are being integrated. Training of primary care providers for mental health is feasible and it enables retaining the learned skills. So to summarize, what are the challenges and opportunities? The challenges, you and you have heard these already in uh, the plenary sessions yesterday about uh, the recruitment uh, who have those skills, heavy workload, burnout, motivation, turnover, lack of supervision system, and also some, there are challenges in use of technology. But I wanted to uh, bring your attention to the opportunities. There are opportunities as, the, uh, as I showed, there are tools available. We know have the evidence of effectiveness uh, the, that is available. There are various options such as pre-service and in-service. It provides the opportunity for building skills and for growth of these providers. And last but not least, satisfaction and prestige to the health workers for added responsibility. So with this, I hand it back to Geeta. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Dua, for that wonderful comprehensive presentation and for highlighting the issue of, uh, you know, A, the acute shortage of maternal mental health care providers, you know, trained health care providers globally, and how different uh, cadres of SRMNH workers can be trained for screening and providing maternal mental health services. And also some of the uh, excellent tools that uh, WHO has developed and that are available, including, um, it was interesting to note that you're also going to have a course at the WHO Academy uh, e-learning course, so that's fantastic. Um, uh, so really, and the, and the use of technology, the, the, the options that technology offers and including the challenges and the opportunities that are, uh, that are present. So thank you again so very much. Uh, I will now turn uh, to a panel of eminent scholars, practitioners and senior professionals from Nigeria, Bangladesh and Liberia who have all been doing path breaking work in their countries, ranging from policy advocacy to strengthening provider capacities in implementing quality maternal mental health programs. Our first speaker is from Nigeria, Dr. Bibi Lola Oladeji. Bibi is a senior lecturer and consultant psychiatrist and the former head of the Department of Psychiatry, College of Medicine, University of Ibadan in Nigeria. She has done extensive research and has clinical interest in psychiatry, comorbidities, and integration of services for maternal health. Bibi, welcome to, uh, to the panel. Could you please give us an overview of maternal mental health service provision within the Nigerian context and an example of a successful strategy you have adopted to build provider capacities? What has been the outcome of this strategy and um, what are the next steps? Could you share with us, please? Over to you, Bibi. Um, thank you so much, Jita, for that. Um kind introduction and um, I'd like to appreciate the organizers for having me as part of this panel. So just to provide a brief background, Nigeria, like most other low and middle income countries, have, um, we have limited resources to deal with mental health problems. And we know from studies in Nigeria that mental health problems occur in between 8 and 28% of women in the perinatal period. And most of these women are not identified and they don't get the care they need. There are several reasons for this. One key one is that the frontline healthcare workers that attend to women in this period don't have the required skills to identify and um, manage these mental health um, problems. And then another problem is that even some of, a lot of the healthcare providers really don't appreciate that these common mental health problems, talking about depression and anxiety now, are actually mental health disorders that actually require medical care. And because of the stigma and then the poor knowledge about mental health issues to a lot of women don't seek care. In Nigeria, we have a national mental health policy and that policy stipulates that mental health care should be integrated at all levels of care from primary to secondary to tertiary. But in reality, mental health, only, mental health treatment is, um, services are only mainly at the, um, the tertiary level, that is the um, Kind of the unit where I work in the teaching hospital or the standalone mental health um, facilities. 
So as um, Tarun mentioned in her presentation, the key thing is to have some form of task sharing to kind of um, um, make services more available. So for our program, we choose to work at the primary care level. And the reason for this is that the primary care level is the most accessible. And this is where majority of the women, especially women from the low socioeconomic classes who are more at risk for mental health problems, are likely to register for antenatal care. So we chose to work at, those, at that um, clinic. Another reason why we choose the primary health care level is that majority of the psychiatrists practicing in Nigeria, we practice in the urban centers. And these OM facilities like, are not available at the rural level, but there are primary health care facilities available all over. So we know that to facilitate this as um, um, specialists, we need to take on added responsibility of providing training and supportive supervision and, all, and be able to build the capacity of the frontline primary care workers to identify mental disorders in women, empower them to provide care, and also to help them to identify those who need to be referred for specialist services, and also to have support from the specialist. And we had earlier shown that simple um, in psychosocial interventions based on the Mental Health Gap Action Intervention Guide, recommendations on that for perinatal women include simple psychoeducation, support for solving psychosocial problems, reactivating their social network and having them come to clinic for further sessions were key in getting these women well. So we chose to use those simple interventions from the adapt those simple interventions for the MH gap um, intervention guide for our program. So in building the capacity of these primary healthcare providers, what we did was to adopt a cascade training format because we realized that to have the few um, available specialists carry out training and provide supportive supervision for all the frontline healthcare providers will, be, will not be feasible. In Nigeria, we have about 400 psychiatrists practicing to a population of about close to 200 million. So having them provide frontline training for all the um, um, primary healthcare providers might be, might be a, a major challenge. So the training format that we use for our training programs is, kind of, is very um, practical. We use a combination of interactive teaching sessions where you know the primary care providers are free to ask questions as we go on. And we also use um we also have um specially designed role plays which are meant to help these primary care providers to practice the skills that they're being trained on. The skills needed to be able to take a psychiatric history to diagnose the common mental the mental disorders, especially depression and also for them to be able to provide the simple interventions that I described earlier. And we, one challenge that we found in, in, in our program was that having the primary health care providers identify women that need treatment was a major challenge. So we introduced the screening tool, a two-item screening tool that they could use. So what we found is that when you introduce the screening tool, it improves the ability to know which women need for the assessment and help their ab ability to identify. And the identification improved from 2% before our training to up to like 50% in women that were being screened. And, um, they, and then we, these women are now getting evidence-based interventions. We know that we still need to work further in them, um, build them, um, helping them build, improving their capacity to identify. And then the other thing is, um, even though the Federal Ministry of Health was kept abreast of our program all through, we're still working more in terms of advocating for these um, interventions to be adopted in more in, in more more widespread over in Nigeria. So thank you so much for having me. Let me hand you back to Gita. Gita. Thank you so very much, Bibi, uh, for sharing your country experience on integrating maternal mental health care, particularly at the primary health care level, uh, which you said is most ac accessible for women, and your successful use of the WHO MH Gap Action Guide and using of the cascade uh, training format, uh, you know, to increase also the numbers and the effectiveness of your training. Um, it's uh, encouraging also to note that the knowledge and attitude towards depression is uh, gradually improving, uh, but there is, um, you know, need for clear implementation guidelines in the country and uh, more mental health indicators within the national health policy. 
Um, so thank you again, Bibi, um, for, again, for sharing your experience. I would now like to turn to our next speaker from Bangladesh, uh, Mrs. Farida Begum, who has been relentlessly working to strengthen professional midwifery policy and midwifery regulatory frameworks in Bangladesh. Farida is a midwifery program officer from UNFPA, Bangladesh, since 2014. Prior to that, she has worked for around 25 years with the uh, Federal Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in Bangladesh, and also 10 years with WHO. Farida, welcome to the session and to our panel. Let me ask you, uh, what do you see as the major challenges and barriers to maternal mental health in Bangladesh? Could you also share with us your experience around the recent training uh, for midwives on perinatal mental health that you conducted and your experience with that training and your plans going forward. Over to you, Farida. Farida, can you take yourself off mute, please? Sorry. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I, I, I was talking up. Anyway, thanks, Richard Thiel, and one, one welcome to the distinguished audience of this special session. I'm going to uh, uh, share the Bangladesh country experience. So let's see some challenges uh, from Bangladesh. Uh, so maternal mental health is not integrated adequately in the policy level and also as well as implementation level. And some you know, prevalence I can show you, the postpartum depressive symptom uh, in urban slum, 39.4 and rural, uh, uh, rural 51.7, which is uh, very you know, alarming. Uh, in, this is among the poor mothers. And, and also the lack of education and training, uh, lack of awareness among the mothers and community as a whole. And addressing the maternal health issue at the national level really in a fragmented way. And you know, the gender-based violence increasing day by day during this COVID period and intimate partner violence also increasing, but less focus in this area. And changing the behavior of mothers during the antenatal and postnatal, uh, that's not seen as a health priority for the uh, national uh, body and also the, from the community level. Lack of collaborative care uh, in this special uh, area and lack of screening and counseling, uh, we have still you know social stigma in the society and poor referral path pathway so this is these are the few challenges i can mention including the uh, lack of providers you know in the health system so what is strategies we have taken so you know the midwifery is a new uh, profession whose services are huge impact in the maternal health in bangladesh so we um, so we have selected you know five midwives and for the capacity building training. And the, they have completed the perinatal mental health course organized jointly by the UNFP APRO headquarter and you know, Barnett Institute, who is highly uh, you know, resourced expertise uh, are involved in that one. And participants learned a lot you know, in different methods, in participatory uh, methods, you know, theory, problem identification, how to solve the problem and coursework assignment and quality, uh, you know, how to maintain the quality service and QA session also and undergoing on action plan development. This is especially, uh, you know, I'd like to mention that uh, the participants, they have drafted the action plan to implement in the country level. Especially uh, another one that uh, the excellent session one, the resilience plan uh, they have learned. So successes from the tra training program, uh, I mentioned that success, uh, you know, action plan drafted and it is already, uh, it's already, we have submitted to the government for approval. 
and preparatory phase has completed uh, the uh, training of the midwifery faculty and also some faculty already trained and also the preparatory phase already we have uh, finished that uh, to include this special uh, issue of maternal mental health in the pre-service curriculum and already we have included lesson plan in the pre-service midwifery curriculum as it is ongoing and we have planned to include in the nursing uh, lesson plan also curriculum as well and advocacy is ongoing to the national and local level as well uh, integration of uh, perinatal mental health issue in the remote mobile contact what midwives is running presently using the guideline from the APRO and headquarter uh, that they are contacting with the mother to come to the health facility uh, and that is the best one and we are going to incorporate this issue in that services so next step situation analysis of the um, you know our uh, facilities and integration of maternal uh, mental health on ANC and PNC uh, in the service package to reach, we would like to reach the greater proportion of women. And strengthening the uh, advocacy program to the local and national level, strengthening monitoring, mentoring, as well as the supervision, and including not, you know, we should not forget about the reporting uh, to oversee the mental health counseling by the service providers. And in this case, especially midwives and nurses. Strengthening pre-service education, introduce institutionalized in-service in training. And we are thinking that we should include in the CPDs, uh, continue professional development for uh, as link to the, uh, you know, re-licensing to the nurses and midwives. This is the great initiative. Community engagement of maternal mental health counseling, uh, incorporation of uh, maternal mental health in the mainstreaming. Without this, we cannot succeed of this program. We should be mainstreaming in the health service program and facility should be ready uh, with the collaborative care of maternal mental health. So thanks for patient sharing and let's join hand to address this issue and address this issue nationally as well as globally. Thank you very much. And thank you, Farida, for that excellent presentation and for your passion, uh, which was so evident from all that you said. And uh, uh, really, some of the challenges that you've highlighted in Bangladesh, I think they're, they're, they're globally there about, you know, just uh, the very basic thing about lack of awareness, the stigma behind the maternal mental health uh, care and uh, total unpreparedness at policy level and program level and, you know, the challenges are really, really huge. Uh, so we were delighted to hear, uh, you know, about your successful training and that you've developed an action plan going, going forward and that, you know, you, you're starting with faculty training, I, I suppose, in a cascade manner, uh, like, uh, like a previous uh, speaker mentioned. And, um, uh, you know, another thing that you highlighted was, uh, you know, to, to strengthening provider capacities through better integration and institutionalization at pre-service level, uh, both for midwifery and for nursing. You know, again, that same issue of task sharing, including integration uh, of MMH in uh, antenatal care, postnatal care, better mentoring, monitoring, supervision, reporting, and counseling, uh, just to name a few uh, highlights from all that all the wonderful uh, things that you shared with us. So thank you again, uh, Farida. We are delighted uh, to learn from you. Um, I will now uh, turn to our final speaker for this session is, uh, and that is uh, Mr. Benedict Dawson. Ben is the country program lead for the Carter Center Mental Health Program in Liberia and the center's country representative for health to the Liberia Ministry of Health. Ben oversees the center's behavioral health initiatives in Liberia, focused on advancing mental health workforce development, policy implementation, and advocacy. Ben, a very, very warm welcome to you. Tell us, Ben, what you see, again, as the major challenges in, it, uh, in addressing maternal mental health in Liberia and the strategy you have adopted in integrating this within your enhancing maternal health and well-being project uh, that I understand uh, you are leading in Liberia. Over to you, Ben. 
Thank you very much, Gita. So just to talk a little bit about work here, in Liberia overall, poor maternal and child health outcomes are a serious issue, but there is a dis disproportionate focus of mental health care on physical health services, which leaves mental health out of the picture. The number of skilled mental health workers or maternal and child health professionals with mental health training is low. Yet a few of them are providing, yet the few that are providing services actually lack proper incentives. And we see over and over symptoms of mental health issues, uh, depression, postpartum psychosis are commonly reported by health workers among pregnant women and mothers. For example, in one project implemented by the Carter Center in, in Maserato County in 2008, 31% of the pregnant women we work with uh, who had children under two years were diagnosed for and treated for depression. And also we've come to see that pregnant women and mother, mothers tend to normalize uh, the symptoms of, de of depression. So our strategy has been to improve the services by working with them. So basically, we work with the government of Liberia using a three-pronged development and sustainability model, tackling workforce development, law and policy, and stigma. Specific to maternal mental health, we are implementing an adaptive version of the Thinking Healthy Program in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and the Liberian Center for Outcomes Research in Mental Health. The project is actually funded by Open Society Foundation and Grand Child Years Calendar. Thinking Healthy, as you may be aware, is an evidence-based psychological intervention based on cognitive behavioral therapy principles to treat pregnant women and mothers with depression. The approach is to help pregnant women and mothers identify, practice, and replace healthy, unhealthy thinking with positive mindsets, behaviors, and health-seeking practices. The intervention has been successful, successfully implemented in several countries, like Pakistan and Peru. And some of the findings we've seen for mothers, for example, include reduction in depression and disability and improvement in the use of contraception. For babies, we've seen increased immunization and six months of breastfeeding and reduction in diarrhea episodes as well. So, to ensure that this project is successful, context-specific, sustainable, and feasible to integrate into the Liberian health system, we have first adapted and validated the manual using the burner framework, considering language concepts and images by working with local maternal and child health experts, pregnant women, and health workers. We use stack shifting strategy by training nurses, midwives, and mental health clinicians to deliver the intervention. And we collaborate strongly with the Ministry of Health and other key stakeholders to help scale up and integrate the intervention into routine maternal, newborn, child health services, community health services, and relevant policies like the mental health policy and other framework like the nurturing care framework. And we are actually building on existing platforms like the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Program in Liberia and the elevated momentum that we have now for mental health uh, in the country. So how is this working for us? To date, we have the buy-in from the Ministry of Health to implement this project at both facility and community levels. We have adapted the intervention and trained 17 master trainers. Those 17 master trainers are now training health workers and they've trained 233 health workers and community health volunteers out of our target of 360. And we are set to begin screening over 21,000 pregnant women for depression and targeting over 3,400 for enrollment. We have a roadmap to embed the intervention into relevant programs, policies, and services. And we have also outlined a structure to ensure continuous supportive supervision 
to motivate health service providers. So what we're thinking about next steps is to actually begin the rollout and evaluate this intervention within the context of Liberia. Hopefully we'll be able to expand to other counties and we want to continue the engagement that we have with key stakeholders that includes uh, policymakers, media, the academic community, the other key groups within the country to share lessons learned. So basically that's where we are. And this project is posing to be um, a game changer because the endorsement we received from the Ministry of Health, from the Liberal Board of Nursing and Midwifery, from the Physician Assisting Association and other key partners it's very much a, a welcoming. And they are all looking expectantly to see us do a great job and roll this project out. Thank you, Kita. Thank you, Ben, so very much, um, you know, for that brilliant presentation and for sharing with us, you know, a, uh, you highlighted a very uh, important point uh, right at the beginning about too much focus on physical health. Uh, you know, and, and and too little on on the on the mental aspect, and uh, and the fact that um, there's increasing incidents being reported that should ring some alarm bells. And I we are so happy that this uh, techcon is happening because apparently the alarm bells are now really ringing and are being heard, and hopefully they will be heard even further. Um, I, I was really impressed, uh, uh, you know, by your saying that this is going to be a game changer, and uh, and the way that uh, you have sought the buy-in of the Ministry of Health, you know, through your strong advocacy, through your three-pronged approach and not just workforce development, uh, you know, through the cascade approach again that you that you are mentioning, uh, you know, you train a few and then they train a few. And uh, also looking simultaneously at the policy level and then also uh, um, addressing the stigma of it, you know, so that more people come out with it and it, the problem can, can be addressed. So uh, thank you so much for sharing uh, your roadmap uh, with us. I think, um, uh, th that closes our round of, uh, of uh, you know, the panel discussion. And I will now open the floor for some Q&A. Um, I see that uh, we don't have too much of time. Um, Laura, how are we doing on time? How, many, how much time do we have for the Q&A? We have about uh, eight minutes left. Eight minutes left, okay. So uh, let me take a few questions. So there was one question for Farida. Uh, that said here, just wondering if the training of five midwives was the training of trainers program and why it was only five midwives. Over to you, Farida. Yes, five midwives, this is the first time actually, we are so impressed with this training program, uh, Asia Pacific uh, region, what uh, the organized this program with headquarter, UNEP headquarter, and also, uh, you know, the Barnett Institute and using the WHO guideline. So this is a new profession and huge impact of midwifery services on maternal health. So the government identified the five midwives as a trainer and they are now working with the, you know, to train the nurses and we are planning uh, ultimately, you know, we'll train the medical doctors, other collaborative, you know, we are mentioning the collaborative care. So all the care provider we will include in this uh, you know, system to, to care about this maternal mental health. Yeah. Thank you, Farida. So it's basically the talk sharing mode, you know, so not just one cadre of SRMNH workers, but a broader, uh, you know, using other SRMNH workers also. So thank you for that. So there's another question here for, for Ben. And uh, it says here, is there a way to access the adapted uh, manual using framework? Um, some of participants would be interested in that. So, yeah, Is, do you have a link or could you share something more? Well, the, the, that's the work in progress. So we have the adaptive manual now, and that's what we're using to, to roll out the intervention. But as we are working, we are still learning. So we are taking notes and trying to improve it over. So this manual will be available, say, maybe by the middle of next year when we have completed the first phase of the project. 
Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Ben. And I think uh, maybe we can discuss with the you know uh, organizers. Maybe there's there would be some repository where some of these resources could be shared. Uh, so thanks, Ben. Uh, there is a, a question for uh, Tarun. Uh, MH Gap is a good training module, but it is general. Has any country adapted MH Gap 2.0 for MMH training? Over to you, Tarun. Thank you, thank you, Geeta. Actually, uh, uh, BB covered and talked about how this has been used in Nigeria. So that was a very good question, and Geeta, you had an, an answer to that question. Uh, but, but just to say, I think uh, I, 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 since I have the floor, taking this opportunity, uh, I, I, one of the things uh, that always comes up is the uh, you know the workload we are increasing on the midwives and they don't have the capacity uh, uh, and so this question always comes in and you know you can be devil's advocate and he asked me you are asked you are telling us to increase the workload but but here I think um, I, and I truly believe this that uh, it actually uh, these uh, these uh, help to empower the midwives and it helps um, knowing about maternal mental health intervention helps to uh, make uh, support them in a in a some way. So and uh, when we talk about these um, interventions, psychosocial support, psychological interventions, they can all be delivered in a step care manner, similar to what we do for physical health. What we need is the, is the commitment, uh, you know, uh, 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 to understand that these issues are important, that something can be done about it, and we have the tools to do so. So I'm really, uh, it's heartening to see this conference happening. And, you know, this conversation between the mental health and maternal health colleagues uh, that we are having now. Thanks, Tarun. Uh, in, in, indeed, uh, you know, our, our colleague from Nigeria did point out uh, about how they have used, uh, you know, this image gap tool uh, in, their, in their trainings. And I think one another point that she made was that uh, it was more effective where the, the tool was being used, uh, the, the results being seen were far more effective than uh, where they were just training without the tools. It's so, so people found it useful to have, uh, you know, uh, some kind of a questionnaire, and uh, you know that they could that that, that they could use. Uh, so thanks again. Uh, let's see if we can take one more question. Um, uh, so there's one question here, uh, Ben. This is for Ben. Uh, one second. Uh, are you using screening for antenatal depression, Ben? Um, uh, this is for you. Yes, yes. So we are using the PHQ-9 and we also use the WHO uh, disability assessment skill. So for PHQ-9, those uh, mothers who score four actually are enrolled in the program and then they receive sessions because the whole Thinking Health Project has 16 sessions. So once they are enrolled, they can start receiving sessions. So we actually have a translated version of the PHQ-9 for the librarian context that we're using. And yeah, so we've seen good results with that already from field training uh, before moving on to rollout. So where we initially, when we started in, we had about eight, master trainers who each of them work with two pregnant women over the time. And the average PHQ-9 score we had was 17. And after the first three sessions, we saw a reduction in the scores up to seven. And followed by several sessions, we saw a score drop down to five. So, and we've repeated this with different cohorts as we do the training. And I think we have a good enough information to think that this is going to be, uh, this is going to work. So that's why we want to scale out and start the evaluation at a larger level. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. Very quickly, uh, uh, one last question, and then I will uh, wrap up the session. Uh, the, do any of the presenters have uh, costing information uh, uh, on, on, on your initiative? Just very, very quickly I in just, one sentence. I just shared something on costing. I just shared an article. I think maybe Laura can post it. Yeah, um, I, I put it in the chat group. 
Yeah. Uh, Geeta, just to say that we had looked at the costing of scaling up adding thinking healthy to routine RMNCH services and published it in Lancet 2017. Uh, that, uh, you know, it's only 10 to 20 cents that you can integrate these to the routine RMNCH services mm -hmm. to the current visits that are happening. So I'm happy to uh, share that link to the article. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so with this, I would now like to close uh, this session with a huge, huge thank you to all our esteemed panelists and for all the and to all the guests who joined the session. Um, uh, I hope it was uh, a learning experience for you as it is for me. And uh, also a huge heartfelt thanks to the organizers, USAID's MCGL, WHO and UNFPA for this global technical consultation on such an important and a long neglected topic. So thank you all, have a lovely day.